Hickok 45 here. Is it a Marlin or is it a Ruger? Let's find out. It goes through a propane tank. So that means it must be what? How about both? <laughs> yeah, it's a new Ruger Marlin. And it's in 44 Magnum. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you think you're getting away, buddy. <laughs> I'm sorry, but I had to do that. Now I'm going out to the gong for a couple. Oh, yeah. I'll bet you, Pumpkin, let's take care of you right away. <laughs> in on the move. I got him on the move. <laughs> okay, we got an empty one in the chamber. Yeah, what we have here is the uh, new Marlin, model 94, 1894, classic. Yes, what they call it. And uh, we are so happy to see Ruger finally get to these model 94s. One of my favorite rifles, as you all know. Yeah. And the favorite rifle of uh, some other folks I know. It's just uh, just a handy, again, pistol caliber carbine, right? 44 Magnum, 357, 38, 44 Special. Uh, let's see, I've got three of them. Yeah, 45 Colt, yeah, almost forgot. So it, we were just uh, waiting anxiously for Ruger to start making these, and now they have. I'm still anxious for them to come out with the actual cowboy uh, limited models with the octagonal barrel and all that like my old one here and I brought it out to a little comparison but uh yeah this is it and uh what about it buffalo no I didn't so the buffalo survived <laughs> another day but we appreciate wideners.com uh you got some hand loads I've got some fioke got different thing I think I was shooting federal there uh, got some, might even try a little Underwood. This is some 44 Special. Yeah, that's one of the things I wanted you to uh, experiment with along with me or, or be here as I do it. I, I've tried four or five rounds of 44 Special. The one thing I have read about this one is that it's supposed to feed 44 Special uh, smoothly as well. And a lot of farms do. I have uh, not tried it a lot in this one. Uh, can't remember to tell you the truth, but sometimes when you go to the shorter cartridge and a lever gun, it doesn't do as well. That's why uh, your lever guns and 22 rim fire, you know, long rifle uh, and semi-automatics and all those, they're, they're almost always, they probably are always, always is probably the right word, right? They're, they're long rifle, you know, cause it's just a little uh, ticklish, tricky, uh, getting it to, to feed reliably to begin with. So you start dealing with different length cartridges and that really ups the ante, doesn't it? Uh, it's a little bit of the same with a, a lever gun, so we'll experiment some with that. Can I shoot some of my hand loads first? Yeah. Okay, so this gun is uh, is out. This is, uh, you know, from Ruger, of course. I don't know, you know, they don't really have this one. Uh, let's see, is Ruger even on the... I think it's got the Ruger, yeah, logo there. Uh, but a uh, proof mark, whatever you call that. But it's really not you know, called Ruger Marlin. I think a lot of us call them that, but it's, uh, you know, it's a Marlin. It's a Marlin. And they have continued the production and uh, they have, I think, the, what, the 336s are out, Model 95s that came out first, and now this. And so it's, it's great to see it. I was afraid they might not make a blued, blued gun. It has a pretty black walnut, a little bit of checkering there. So, uh, so far, it seems fine to me. I uh, am happy that it's out, so I'm happy to brag on it a little bit. Uh, just glad to see these good old lever actions in this company that has gone through it, right? <laughs> uh, to be back in action somehow, somehow. And you might recall, I have mentioned several times, I know just in general talking to people and probably in a video here and there, that when Ruger, 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 Ruger bought them, that they had no choice but to improve them, right? Because there was the quality was kind of sketchy, you know, there for a while, right? And when they bought them, it was like, and we all had the same thought, I'm sure, like, why would you buy them if you're not going to do it right, if you're not going to make it better? Because the worst thing Ruger could have done 
would have been come out with the Marlins. Hey, we brought your Marlins back. And there, there's a lot of shoddy workmanship or something. That, that would have been really bad. Like why even jump into that pool if you're not gonna do something really well? So it looks like that's what they've done. Now that doesn't mean every firearm is gonna be perfect, right? But uh, anyway, this one seems fine. I've, I've shot it several times. I'm gonna shoot it some more right now. Like, how about that two liter? Yeah. And cowboy, you need to be shot with a lever gun. Yeah, right in the middle. <laughs> and how about, uh, oh, well, uh, see if it's uh, a, sm a pot smoker. Huh? Yeah, it looks like it is. All right. <laughs> Make sure that thing is aerated, ventilated, right? So, pretty cool. Uh, I prefer the, uh, I'm just a cowboy at heart. I, I have fallen in love, as you know, with the uh, octagonal barrels on these things. And, uh, but they're a little heavier, they're generally a little longer. And uh, I have to say, I was carrying this around the place uh, yesterday or the day before, just plinking with it. And I see the appeal in a smaller, lighter firearm. <laughs> I really do. It is pretty handy. Uh, it doesn't have the weight uh, of the octagonal barrel and everything. Uh, and I, you know, it, uh, in comparing the quality and the, the wood and the fit and everything, it, it looks fine to me. Uh, you might prefer a different fit. You know, I, you know, Marlin is not a, I mean, historically, they've never been like a very top of the line firearm necessarily. I, sort of in terms of function they have been, but they've never been, a three thousand dollar gun or something you know an heirloom uh with lots of engraving and all that generally speaking i'm sure those models were available uh, well actually you know they were when remington owned them <laughs> there were a few like that but uh they're just a kind of a working man's gun as you might say if you understand that phrase um and, and they're just a gun that works a good solid firearm is uh, kind of what they've been and it, it looks like they're back. I, uh, I have not uncovered, I don't think you might see something in glaring fit, fitting issues or anything like that. The wood to metal fit seems to be, you know, just fine. Uh, it didn't come, of course, with <laughs> the decelerator or whatever, the limb saver, but I need the length. And, uh, you know, that's what it looks like naked. Okay, can I put the clothes back on so it fits me better? Yeah. Also want to thank Alabama Holster. Yeah, got my phone in one and my pistol in one right now. They're a great little uh, concealment holster company. Kydex, pocket, purse, belt, you name it. Great, great outfit and uh, appreciate their support. Okay, what else do you want to know about it? Yeah, oh, I know what you want to know. The same thing I want to know. Let's see. That's, um, these are the specials. Yeah, I haven't tried these. I try, I forgot what the brand was I did try, but let's try these uh, Fioki. All right, 44 special. I tell you what, when I have a lever gun that is 357 Magnum or 44 Magnum, and it, it just wants to hang up even a little bit with the shorter cartridges, I just write them off. I, I don't want, because lever guns can be a little wanky anyway if they're not you know some of them are not as smooth as others in their function you know i put all these in here like they're going to work uh so yeah i just consider the 44 magnum or a, or a 357 not a 38 special you know whatever but uh, a lot of them will function both so we'll try this 44 special now it's not like you're going to find a bunch of real bargains on 44 special is it uh, <laughs> and save a ton of money because 44 Special can be a fairly expensive round. That was smooth. Okay. That went in okay. Uh, I think you do okay. I might load them up again. I know 
a couple of them it was me or what they weren't quite as smooth but uh it seemed like it was seemed like they did fine did fine enough to to shoot them uh we'll try a couple more <laughs> as, as smooth as the magnums perhaps it is a brand new rifle too so that's good news looks like it actually is a 44 magnum 44 slash 44 special right because you never know when you'd be out there in the wilderness and you run out of 44 Magnum, but you happen to have a couple of 44 Specials. Yeah, could happen. Could enable you to survive, right? Oh, that one didn't eject out. Is that me or the gun? I think we're empty. Yeah. Okay. Seems okay, I think. Yeah. So, it is a 44 Magnum 44 Special. So, is there anything else now? It's got a uh, a cold hammer forged barrel, uh, and it's all uh, CNC machined out of or how they phrase it out of forged alloy steel. Okay, whatever alloy steel means to them, but a cold hammer forged barrel, and uh, you know, it seems like it's made well. You don't have like a uh, an aluminum lever or anything like that. Ruger didn't try to cut cost uh, for doing something silly like, uh, I say silly, we just wouldn't want an aluminum lever, would we? Uh, I wouldn't, because I'm a real cowboy. You know? And then black walnut, American black walnut, you know, it's made with, so. It looks like they're keeping with the, uh, the Marlin tradition of old. And again, uh, these are not like a Winchester 1873 or anything, but they go back to guess when? Now it's a model 1894. So even my relatives in Kentucky could probably tell me when this rifle was invented. Yeah. So it is an 1894 model. That's not just a random number. It goes back as it developed in 1870, or 1883, and 1884. So uh, you know it's got a lot of history. A lot of history and uh, pretty nice. It's, uh, I think the only chambering they have out right now is 44 Magnum. And, uh, uh, but I'm, I'm sure it'll be in 357 and, and when everything is moving down the road. So let's shoot it again. How about some Magnum, okay? Oh, we're gonna try this Underwood special, I forgot. Uh, 44, what is 44 special? Better be. Uh, da, 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 44, yeah, 44 special. Fourth special was a great round. And I don't know if this is especially hot. You know, there's Underwood's famous for 975, almost a thousand feet per second. So, oh yeah, look at that. That is a, <laughs> that's a, that's a nice defensive round, isn't it? Or offensive round, depending on uh, what kind of person you are. <laughs> that was terrible. I always try a few of those. That is a type of round that you know, like I would carry in my, uh, what was it, 696 Smith & Wesson revolver. That would be a, a great round for that, wouldn't it? Okay. Oh, well, it is only a special. Well, we better we better do a magnum on that water thing. Let's just try this. Hit the cowboy again. Yeah, in the gong. I'm just, just destined not to hit that buffalo. Well, let's just use a magnum on him since we have we have uh, let him live two different times because of an empty chamber. Where's those magnums I was about to grab? Yeah, okay, we're gonna shoot some magnums. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, 44 mag, 240 grain, okay. So, yeah, those feel more like a, a, a magnum, light magnum to me. Okay. Some of these before I make you leave oh yeah man nothing like a lever gun i am so pleased that i uh, i see a lot of you uh taking a strong interest in lever guns and guns like this uh you're you're the world is learning how much fun they are you're okay and obviously older characters like myself even some younger than me uh you know, would be more familiar with them maybe and growing up with them and everything 
Uh, but I mean, really young people uh, seem to be taking to these things. I love to see that. All right, water jug. There we go. I knew that would blow it. All right. Now, Buffalo, I've got some rounds to throw at you. It might take all of them. There we go. It was holding too low. Might even pop that ram. Well, I think I'm going just over, aren't I? Okay, finally. That was probably the last round it was. Okay. Uh, Sight-wise, that would be, uh, I haven't really given you any negatives, have I? I gotta make something up, right? Or else you'll think we're in Ruger's pocket. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Uh, I think the wood on my old one's a little prettier because I like the blonde, but you know, a lot of people would like the dark. Uh, the only thing is the sights. I, I just, in this, I, I would probably put, uh, is drilled and tapped four sights like this, uh, ghost ring. But I tell you with this thing, with those Skinner sights, you almost can't miss, you know? You just almost can't miss. With the Buckhorn sights, they're fine. I see that okay, but it's just a little different. I just get used to it uh, and figure out where to hit, where to hold, where to hold so I can hit, right? So that's probably all I know about it. So I am going to run you all out of here and shut my mouth because I've been talking too much. But it's pretty cool. That's a great chambering, 44. Boy, there's not much you can't do east of Mississippi with this this rifle and this chambering. And now some of you are wondering what that means. <laughs> because east of Mississippi, you know, you're the, the average deer hunter, they're hunting in areas like this, and you're, you're not trying to reach out at 500 yards and that kind of thing. That's what we mean. Uh, but... Uh, that's, that's just a pretty nice rifle. My, uh, my evaluation so far is uh, it's a nice one and I can't find any shoddy workmanship on it at all. And it seems to feed both magnums and specials. And uh, the only negative with the rifle is I missed a couple shots over there. So that's gotta be the rifle's fault, right? Not mine. Yeah, I know who to blame. <laughs> now I'm glad you came out and uh, helped me enjoy this new Marlin. 44 Magnum, model 1894. Life is good. Oh yeah, that's better. This is a great gun for defense. Oh hey, didn't see you guys there. Uh, While well, I've got you here, I want to remind you of our friends over at Talon Grips and Ballastall. Talon Grips makes uh, grips, can you believe it? Uh, for all different types of firearms. You can get rough texture or more of a rubberized texture. Uh, just sticks right on there. You know, really affordable, really cool option to in, improve the grip for your handguns um, or, or rifles. Uh, so please check them out at TalonGunGrips.com. You'll be glad you did. And also Ballastol. Uh, Dad has been using Ballastol for many years. It's a cleaner and a lubricant, and it's non-toxic. Uh, it works really great, and we're happy to have them on board since it's been a part of our shooting endeavor for a very long time. So go to Ballastol.com, TalonGunGrips.com. And also, while you're out there, I'm juggling all these things here. Also, uh, while you're on the internet, please do check out our other social media like Hickok45 on Facebook. There's also Hickok45 on Twitter, the real Hickok45 on Instagram. There's a John underscore Hickok45 on Instagram where I do some things. There's Hickok45.com. Uh, you can find us also on GunStreamer. So check out all that stuff and then watch more videos.